When uh, Sir Ivor suggested me to organise this special you know, event for uh, Kit and, uh, and Shelley, I was very, very pleased and actually very honoured to offer the Embassy uh, to organise such an event, considering the strong bonds of Kit and Shelley with, uh, with Italy. Well, this is a particularly exciting time for us. Um, the Keats Shelley Memorial Association is just that. It is in memorial of the two great late romantic poets, Keats and Shelley. And uh, we are just coming up to two bicentenaries of their deaths. And so this is an opportunity for us to mark these major um, centenaries and to reflect on the importance that these poets have had for English literature and are so admired not only in the English-speaking world but throughout the world. Keats Shelley 200 will be a three-year initiative that celebrates the, the extraordinary legacies of the poets John Keats and Percy B. Shelley. We will be celebrating in 2020 the bicentenary of John Keats's arrival in Italy with an event in Naples and then also an event in Rome. Into 2021, and celebrating the, uh, the bicentenary of Keats's death, we will have a, a wonderful exhibition with items on loan from the Bordley Libraries of the University of Oxford and the New York Public Library, as well as some other smaller private collections. And that will commemorate the bicentenary of Keats's death. And then into 2022, we will have a festival of contemporary poetry in Lerici, Shelley's final residence in Italy. John Keats was essentially a dreamer. He would dream of a better life, of better things. Um, and he dressed that up in his wonderful language, which is beautiful and sensuous and rich and colorful. But he is somebody who's looking for something better in his poetry in life. And I think that appeals to all people, but maybe particularly to young people. I think the whole idea of memorial is very important. Um, the great Shakespeare phrase, to give to airy nothing, a local habitation and a name. And I think the idea of the houses as kind of mem living memorials that carry us forward is very, very important. A rebel poet, a wanderer, someone who's always looking for a better world, and that's very strongly in his poetry. And a great deal of anger against the political world around him, which I think we recognise now very much. Well, we're very excited to be working in partnership with the, the Keats Shelley Memorial Association on the co-production of Frankenstein. Um, there's so much resonance in that work for us as a, as a company supporting performers with learning disabilities because we've got stories about creation, about abandonment, about ostracisation. What we try to do with Blue Apple is to give a contemporary spin on everything as well. So we'll bring perhaps uh, a few dance routines to Frankenstein that people weren't expecting. Uh, there may be some horror and there may be some tears, but there'll certainly be some joy joy by the end of it as well. Apples and Snakes is the largest spoken word organisation in the country, we work across the country with poets and storytellers and rappers and we like to uh, engage with young people and audiences and stretch people's ideas of what poetry is and can be. I think first and foremost Keats and Shelley inspire young people of today as they have been doing for the last 200 years. Um, because of the vibrancy, the sheer vibrancy, the energy of their language. These are poets who are deeply philosophical and, and also to some extent trans-historical, universal if you like. What we notice um, at the Keith Shelley House is reaching out to some of our followers on social media for example. We have devoted fans from all over the world, from Asia, from the Indian subcontinent, from the Middle East. People across the world really feel connected to these poets. Our project is kind of focusing on the fact that they are they were young men, they were very interested in beauty and unattainable beauty and we're kind of taking that and thinking about how does that resonate with young people today and sort of thinking about the Instagram, social media culture and how we can translate what they were talking about into young people's lives. There are so many events being staged for Keats Shelley 200, but I think particularly the candlelight reading sounds wonderful. Uh, the exhibition at the house in Rome I'm really looking forward to, although perhaps that's also partly because I will try and engineer a trip to Rome. And then some of the creative competitions that are going on for young poets, for example, because that, that then makes Keats and Shelley more relevant to young people and encourages them to read these wonderful poets.